Hey guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here. Thank you for joining me once more. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm super excited because I've been doing remote learning for six weeks now. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt so limited and so tied down. I felt like I wasn't giving my kids the best of me. I felt like my best practices, my teaching style wasn't translating to my kids virtually. I am a hands-on kinesthetic, let's move around, let's do this, give me, give me participation, active engagement. And it, it was hard and it took some adjusting and it's been six weeks, but I myself has, have started adapting my practice and I, I see it coming through and I hope that my kids are enjoying it. And one of the things that I started doing is thinking, just because we're in remote learning doesn't mean that I have to change my teaching style. It just means I need to become more innovative. I need to challenge myself to continue growing professionally. And so now I thought, why not share one of these best practices that, gosh, just went amazing, amazing, and the kids loved it. What I used to do in class is I used to do a kinesthetic review game where I would, on a piece of paper, literally, I'd put on a piece of paper words, kind of like, um, it looked like a bingo card and I would put words. I'd put that under my document camera, present it against the wall, and then I would group the kids into two separate teams. I'd give them each a fly swatter and then I'd ask questions and they'd go and swat that word and whoever did it first would get the point, right? And then I'd have several pages of those templates, right? Of words, of different words, depending on the content we were going over. And I thought, how can I do this in a virtual setting where it's still, you know, going to really give me what I want for my kids and that's practice and repetition, uh, active engagement, and I'm able to check for understanding, right? So that I can monitor my, my instruction and adjust it, right? So I did this activity. It worked out amazing. The kids loved it. They're asking constantly, when are we gonna do it again? I also did it over the weekend. I provided some professional development and uh, the teachers enjoyed it. So I thought, you know what? I need to share this out to any teacher who wants uh, to try it out, who finds value in it. It's here for you guys. I will show you a little tidbit of, of how it worked using the, the training that I provided over the weekend. So I'll show you a little pre-recorded session. And then once we come back, I'll let you know, hey, these are the main things you need to do in order for it to work uh, to its fullest potential, right? So that you can just to troubleshoot a couple of little things so that you don't have to go through those things that I went through. But believe me, just quick little things are going to help make this game, this activity so successful and your kids are really going to enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. So I hope you guys like it. The question for the first point is, what European country came for gold, God, and glory? There you go. Miss Kaz with the point. Miss Kaz with the point. So we get a point here. There you go. Hey, you didn't make a big deal yeah. about my first answer. <laughs> Sorry. I was I was caught up with the ungrouping of you. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> so sorry. You did amazing, Miss. Okay. Miss Wolba. Okay, the next <laughs> one is Erica. Erica and Chayo. Here we go. Get your fly swatters in the ready position so that I know that you're there and that I know that we're ready. And the question is, which European country came and colonized for, to make profit off the fur trade? Which European? Boom, Miss Chayo with the point. Miss Chayo with the point. The French came for fur, boys and girls, or teachers. <laughs> Sorry. All right, good job. Now, that's how we're gonna be playing. And notice that I move them, I move them out of the ready position because the next group, I want to know that they're there. So and then I say, okay, Miss Schroeder, you are next. Make sure you put it in the ready position, please. Miss Cora, ready position, please. Here we go. Let's see. Just there we go. The, it is a tight game, boys and girls. Now, which which group of people were the first type of reform leaders 
that were against slavery. There you go, Schroeder with the win. The answer is Quakers. The answer is Quakers. Excellent, Quakers. They settled in Pennsylvania, guys, and we start talking about all that information. So then you can go ahead and leave it there. And then I move these just so that I know, I know that the next group of people are gonna be, I'm gonna ask them to move to the ready position. Next we have Miss Adriana, please, to the ready position. Then Melissa, to the ready position, please. All right, okay, here we go. The next question is, these colonies were primarily founded for cash crop agriculture. They, oh, that was quick. Yes, there you go. The southern colonies is correct. Southern colonies. So the answer is southern red team with a point. Awesome. All right, guys. So what do you think? Did y'all like it? Now, if you did like it and you want to continue, then grab a copy of this. You'll find it in the description below, free for you guys to use. Just let me know how it went. Talk to me, comment, give me feedback and say, hey, you know what? I, I loved it. It worked out, but I did this and this really leveled it up. So I would love to get feedback from you guys. Uh, some couple of pointers to help you uh, kind of set it up. If you're going through Google Classroom and you're pushing out this presentation through Google Classroom, I recommend uh, for you to just make a copy for each class because when you do set up the names here, you'll have to go back and clean them out if you're using the same copy uh, for your kiddos, all right? So if you have multiple classes, I would just recommend make a copy and so that you can just have them there. I teach back to back to back to back, so there's really no time to waste uh, deleting names, all right? Now, the other thing is you do want to make sure this is a sample, this first one. It's already set up, so the kids will not be able to move this. I created this as a background image, all right? So that's what you want to make sure that you do. You want to make sure that once you edit the text here, that you uh, download this as an image and then re-upload it as the background. But don't worry, let me show you that right now with this one, which is this template is a Halloween template. I went ahead and made a couple and hopefully that inspires you to make your own. Um, I made this one for Halloween. There's a kind of like a fall or Thanksgiving theme one. And then of course a Christmas one. So I can see like some amazing ones for maybe Valentine's or New Year's. So I hope that you guys do uh, get inspired to create your own. I have here a YouTube video that's a kind of like a placeholder. This video, what I'm creating right now, I'll also include right here for you so that when you're editing and you need like kind of to reference back, you can be playing it and working on it at the same time. All right. So let's pretend we're going to edit this one. What you want to do first is you want to click on it and double click on the text. These are grouped. So if you're struggling to add the text because they're grouped, you can just click on them, right click, and then go to ungroup. And then it'll be easier to click on this text so that you can, well, it should be easier to click on the text to be able to uh, edit that text. So whatever you'd like to do, you'd add that text right here. So after you edit all those text boxes, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to File, Download, JPEG. It's going to download only this one right here, okay? So what I do after that is I'm going to duplicate this slide, slide number three. I'm going to duplicate it because I already have all this set up and ready to go. So I'm going to right click, duplicate or control D and I'm going to go to that slide and I'm just going to select all of this by clicking and dragging and see how it's all selected. So again, I'm going to click on the top left corner and keep my finger on my trackpad or on your mouse and then just drag it over to where you what, what you want to select 
Make sure you don't select like the boxes. Notice I selected this box. So you just want to make sure that you're selecting this right here, the actual slide, and then you want to click on delete. All right. And then you're going to right click, change background, choose the image and wherever it went. In my case, it goes to my downloads. I'm just going to click on it, open, and it's going to set it up as the background. So now when you're playing with your students, they won't be uh, struggling to move the fly swatter and accidentally grab the spider by mistake. So we want to make sure that everything is kind of locked in place. That's why these, I also made them into actual images. They were actually grouped and we were struggling with them. So I made them into images. That's it guys. Once it's done, that's it. So it's up to you after that, how you want to organize. Do you want to have all your deck right here for, for your kids and then just tell them go to slide four? Everybody jump onto slide four. Do you want to make them by categories? I mean, it, really the possibilities are endless, but that is the biggest work, which is just editing the words here, downloading it, and then uploading it as a background image. That's the hardest part of this activity. After this, you can push it out on Google Classroom or you can grab the link and share it with your students via Zoom or Schoology or Teams. Just make sure that when you are sharing it via those platforms that you do uh, change the sharing settings, all right? If you're pushing it out through Google Classrooms where your, your kids are gonna go to Google Classroom and join it there, you don't have to mess with the sharing uh, settings there. All right, so again, if you are gonna push it out through Zoom or anything like that, you wanna go to share and you wanna change it to anyone with link or maybe within your own uh, school domain if, you have, if your kiddos have those Gmail accounts. All right guys, that's basically it. What do you guys think? I hope that you try it. Give it a chance, guys. Let me know how did it go. Uh, did you come across some issues or what did you do to maybe really level up this activity? I would love to hear your feedback. And of course, don't forget to give me a little thumbs up. That is my affirmation of performance. And it's what fuels me, guys. It, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm like a student. We all like to get told you're doing a good job. I enjoyed it. I found value in it. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. I am working on my October newsletter and it's almost out so that if you do want to get notified about that newsletter, you go to subscribe and then click the bell right next to subscribe and then you'll get notified. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you guys enjoy this.